In this demonstration, we're going to be adding a smooth coat on top of the plaster wrapping that we did over the clay forming armature. So these are the materials that you are going to need. Um, we have sandpaper, we have plaster, make sure it is any type of plaster would work. You could even use spackling from the department store or even the uh, hardware store or you might have some spackling that you would use to cover holes that you would make when you're hanging up a picture frame that would work as well you're just going to have to get a quart of it um, or what i have here is your basic sculpting plaster number one casting plaster you're going to need a quart container or any type of container would work i like using measuring cups so i know how much i mi i'm mixing to be a little bit more efficient with my plaster you, you're going to want some sort of sandpaper i have an 180 grit sandpaper um, any type of sandpaper would work um, you're going to have to wait until the plaster dries before we use this all this we go through in the demonstration i have a rougher sandpaper here something more coarse this is just an old sand belt that i uh, have some scrap but something a little rougher again as you're sculpting you're going to be thinking about surface and however you want your surface to look after we add some more plaster on top a little thin coat of spackling and then sand it down um, so it's really just up to you but this is what I'm going to use I have some basic uh, clay sculpting tools so I can apply the plaster when it gets a little thick uh, in some of the areas that I can't use my finger. So just something, you could even use a, a, a stick that you carve into a, a nice carve, um, curve form. Just think about it as, you know, a, a thumb that you can just go into some detailed places to add plaster. Uh, plaster does have a, 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 a time that it, uh, we have to attend to while it's curing so we're going to have to wait to that nice sticky state so plaster can then be used like a spackle but if you have your spackling uh, your wall spackling is already pre-mixed you can just uh, go ahead and use any type of tool to add it onto your clay form or your sculpture i have a file here or a a, a kind of a rough rasp of some sort uh, that's just so i can get some texture and if there's an area that is really thick that i want to carve down after my plaster is hardened, I have something a little bit more aggressive to take it down. You're gonna obviously, obviously want a dust mask and some gloves. I like to use my bare hands when I work with plaster because I'm, it's really nothing uh, toxic about it, but it does dry your hands. So maybe a pair of latex gloves or dishwashing gloves, a stir stick of some sort, a paint mixing stir stick or any type of stick so you can mix your plaster and some uh, water available not only for your plaster, but to spray it down so we can really control and also wet the, pl uh, the plaster and fabric that is already on top of the clay form because wet plaster is better when you're adding more plaster on top of it. So if you have dry plaster, a sponge or some water uh, like I have here, so we can wet down your plaster form before we add the plaster to it, the spackling or the smooth coat, and that'll just create a better bond. So the first step is to make sure that we really wet down the plaster and fabric with the surface. So I'm just going to douse it quite a bit because the dry plaster will make the added plaster that we're using or the spackling dry a bit too fast. It'll suck out the moisture that is needed for that layer to cure properly, especially if you're going to be using the plaster mix, the number one casting plaster and not the spackling, but a good dowel. See how I'm just making sure I'm really adding a lot of water to it. I also have a small sponge that I'm going to make sure that I dab it and really soak it. And you might have to do this a few times as you're adding your layer. So go ahead and just keep your sponge wet and make sure that plaster stays somewhat damp. Doesn't have to be soaking if you are getting any weakness due to the wetting of the surface. Uh, you know, just stop. You can always add more plaster and fabric to uh, strengthen areas up, build areas up. But you'll see that how 
you can add mass to it with the plaster layer that we're going to be adding to. So what's nice about this technique, it is completely forgivable. You can also cut, excavate areas, completely take off um, certain sections as long as you don't collapse the form. And again, you can always add more wire, add more clay, and just continuously, uh, you know, have the form grow. So it just depends how far you want to take your ideas and the process. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the plaster now. I have only about eight ounces of water. You don't need very much because it's just a surface coat. Um, but we are going to want to wait until that plaster gets a little more, a little cured, a little sticky, so we can spackle it on vertically. So remember, plaster is just a simple one-to-one -one mix. So easiest way to make or mix plaster accurately in a quart container is just to keep adding until a little volcano forms at the surface of the water. So we should be around 16 ounces when that happens, since it's just a one-to-one -one mix. So until the little volcano forms or until the surface of the water reaches 16 ounces. You want to be fairly accurate with your plaster because we want to have our sculpture last as long as as long as it can, as long as the um, potential of the materials hold up. Now remember, these are not waterproof or uh, water resistant forms, and unless you're going to be adding a oil based surface, so they are indoor pieces just because they're almost like prototypes. So after I got my 16, I'm going to go ahead and mix up that plaster with my mixing container, my mixing stick. And you're going to make sure that you keep mixing until it's a, until there's no chunks of dry plaster. And it's best just to use a regular wooden spoon or just a a, a wooden stick or a, a mixing stick. Don't necessarily need to use anything uh, like an electric mixer because we don't want a lot add a lot of air to the to the plaster. And you can see how that's quite a bit of plaster for just a surface. So that's why I want you just to mix just a bit because we will be discarding a lot of this plaster because we only have so much time from the point that it's sticky enough to travel vertically so it doesn't fall off the form and until it cures hard or it starts to crumble. When the plaster starts to crumble, you don't want to use it anymore. So I have a fairly good mix right there. I'm going to let that get a little bit more stickier before I apply it onto the form. So, hopefully you can see the plaster inside there. Um, still not ready. You can kind of do the drop test if it still spills a bit. Going to want continu to continuously stir it just to make sure you have the proper thickness. Um, if you add it on right now, that, that will be fine. Nothing will happen. But um, again, we're trying just to you know, do the minimal amount of steps in order to get the surface that you want. Now remember, you don't have to do a smooth surface. You can definitely do a textured surface. You can sculpt it. Um, it is plaster, so you can do a lot with it. So, um, but remember, you only have so much plaster, so try your best to be as efficient with the plaster and um, spend some time doing some sanding and finishing uh, with the file and the sandpaper after we're done with the addition. Uh, and also make sure that you are continuously spraying your sculpture down even though you did it quite a bit earlier on 
It will soak in that moisture. Everything is very porous. So go ahead and give it one more good dose before you start adding your plaster. And I do have my sculpture tools ready to go. Again, you can just use your hand as well if you're more comfortable with that. Whatever you need to do to create the surface that you want. So I'm gonna sit here and just continuously watch my plaster. Um, I'm almost ready to do a little adding, but I'm gonna wait just a little bit more. Uh, let that thicken up just a bit more and we'll get going. Almost there. Again, you see how it's not dropping as much. So um, give it just a bit longer and then I'll start to add. Okay, I'm about ready. Give it one more look and you can see how I'm only have a few minutes to work at this after this state here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my tool here because I don't think I want it completely smooth. I think I'm going to want to go ahead and get some texture. I like to carve plaster so I'm going to want to leave me some stuff to work with when I get the sandpaper. Remember to keep your form wet so I, I gave it a good spray of water before I started. So I'm going to go ahead and work around. have to move fairly fast because uh, that plaster is reacting, it is working. And you know you might have to do this a few times, you know, if you if your plaster dries up you know, you have a little bit more, go ahead and mix up maybe uh, four ounces each. Now that I see, uh, see the amount that of plaster that I have and the surface that I need to cover, I, I could have probably just mixed four ounces of water, so, you know. And the reason why I like using a tool versus my hand is because any drips that I get, it's not going to be a large amount of drips. It's going to be just small uh, drips. So less for me to worry about if I, you know, start to run out of some time. Remember that it is your sculpture, so you feel what's comfortable. It's fun to get your hands involved. It's fun, it's fun to uh, feel that plaster. So I understand if you just want to go ahead and just use, use your hands. And I'm going to do a little bit of that after I have add this coat here. So you'll see my hands get in there. But it is important that you have a kind of a nice curved um, tool. 
Remember, just to mimic your thumb shape. Keep moving because that plaster is drying. And you'll notice that the layer that you applied, you know, like over here, it's already getting a little thicker than what I have in the quart container because it's the material underneath, the plaster underneath is, is um, absorbing the moisture from that plaster. So that's why we want to keep that form wet before you apply. But you'll 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 find that it's going to be very nice to um, it's very nice to work with after it starts to get sticky. You have more control of the shape and so right now I'm really just trying to add as much plaster to the area surface area that I need and then I can go back over that as it starts to cure and uh, really work the surface a little bit more maybe that's when I'll get my my hands in there like over here you see how that's getting nice and thick now remember when plaster starts to crumble or uh, detach or crack off as it's curing. That's when you don't want to touch it. So, but if it's moving, go ahead and keep working that form. And you know, maybe you just want to emphasize, uh, you know, smooth form in one part of your your design one of your sculpture. So, you know, not um, you know, it's up to you. You do not do not have to add this surface here or this part of the surface. You know, to every part of your sculpture. If you want to leave some of it raw, if you like the plaster wrapping, it's really up to you. See, I'm just going to add in a large amount on there as much as I can, then I can just get the amount on that I need. Then I can transfer that material around. So sometimes you just need to add as much as you can on the surface. And you know, I'm, uh, my plaster is reacting kind of nice. It's 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 taking its time, which is what I want. Um, so one thing I didn't emphasize is make sure you use cold water uh, when you are mixing your plaster because that will slow down the curing time. If you use hot water, it, it'll speed up that curing time. So we want as much time as the, that plaster allows us to work with. So go ahead and. Only use cold water for this step. And 
for demonstration purposes, I'm trying to cover it in one coat, right? You don't have to do that. You know, when you're home or when you're in your studio, you can definitely take time and just work on one teardrop form and really get that nice and then continue on with the next. So, um, as an artist, you will always understand that you have your own unique pace that allows your creativity to really you know, uh, you know, give it the time it needs or what you need to uh, learn the process and learn how to work with the material. So, you know, listen to yourself. And remember, no matter how textured it is, or let's say you don't feel you're having, you can control this part of the process, remember it is removable. So you, the more you add, well, the more you just have to take off. So sometimes adding more is better. Okay, and then, as you can see, my plaster is getting pretty thick. It's almost like, a, like an actual spackle paste right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to cover the larger area here, down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to, after I'm done with that, I have a, um, my sponge, I have a damp towel here that I can then wet my hand, damp my hand down, I have my water sprayer, and I can soften the plaster. So it's a nice trick that I'll show you in a bit, but it has to be a little bit more cured than this. Right now, if I add any water, since it's still, you know, fairly wet, it's sticky, but it's definitely um, not cured or not beginning to harden, uh, it'll just wipe a lot of that plaster away. So. So I'm doing my best to cover every aspect. I won't be able to. I'm going to have to do another another round of uh, coats, but just a bit more at the very end here. This long stretch here, I'm going to have to do it on the next round. So two two uh, two rounds of this would will, will will be my amount that I need so I'm thinking the minimum of yours as well would be about two if your shape is similar to size and scale. But if you need more, well go right ahead. And I really love plaster at this state even though it looks very textural. Um, I love the way it smells at this state. I love the way it, um, just how forgivable it is, but then all of a sudden it gets like hard as a stone. And uh, that's just amazing to me. And, and then of course the way it captures that light, it being this matte uh, white color or white tone, and, and it's just, it's nice to look at as you are moving, working in the round. And it's still workable, I'm still going at it. It's still, it's getting a little bit thick, so I'm gonna have to, at some point, decide to get my hands in there, but let me go ahead and continue. I'm sorry if my hand gets in the way of the camera lens, but uh, just like you, <clears throat> I'm trying to do it correctly. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of spray of water. Remember, that plaster is still wet. So I'm going to spray down just a bit. Spray my hands down. Keep that water sprayer close to me. And then I'm going to soften it down. So that layer of water that I sprayed will just help me help that uh, surface just smooth out just a bit. You need a little more water, go ahead and spray it down. Now it's getting fairly hard, but still be able to smooth out somewhat as much as I can. It's not going to be the final smoothing because remember I want to eventually get the sandpaper and the, the file to it. You know, um, but it does take down a lot of the sharp edges. So that's really what I really want you to do is just really just take down a lot of the sharp edges and try to round everything out a little bit more. Now remember, if you're working with your wall spackling, it might, work, it might react a little differently with the water. So you're going to have to maybe do a little test run if you're using just regular wall spackling. So I do hope you use your regular plaster because it's really just a more traditional and just a better quality of plaster too. So, and that matters when you're making this stuff. So, okay, so that's my first stage. Um, even at this stage, I can go in and I've cleaned my hands off a bit. It's still allowing me to do a little movement. So it's I recommend you work on that surface when that plaster is curing as much as it allows you to. Again, now you, any cracking you see happening, um, go ahead and stop and it's best just to let the tools do the, do the rest, but try your best to utilize as much of that plaster as possible and always treat your surface after you're done so you can take a good look at it in between these steps. So that's my first coat. Now remember I didn't finish this section, I just have that section. And um, before I really get into surfacing with uh, uh, filing and sandpaper, it's gonna look a little rough. So that's why I really want you to work in about maybe three steps. You can achieve this part, in probably three rotations, three little mixes, three wet rub downs, and then um, after that, some sandpaper. But uh, we'll have to wait till that dries first because if I sand it right now, it's just going to clog up my sandpaper and not do much. But the rasp, you can. But I recommend you allow this to set for 20 minutes before you do anything else to it before the next step. And then you have to re-wet and then go ahead and proceed on adding. Now, if you can do it in one setting, by all means, go for it because there's not really much... Uh, uh, um, uh, you can do to really destroy this piece unless it's dropping it or of course uh, being too aggressive while you're adding the material. So, you know, have a sensitive touch, um, have the artist touch, and uh, let's try to get this covered and then I'll come back after this is cured for my next coat and then a little sanding and a little rasping and I'll show you how far I like to take it. Um, again, uh, it's really up to you how you want your texture to be. So I went ahead and mixed up on my second batch. I did about four ounces of water this time um, instead of the eight. So I'm going to have again plenty. Uh, so I should have about uh, you know eight complete ounces of plaster. And I'm going to go ahead and begin to add to the very bottom areas that I missed.
again, I made sure that I wet the surface again first and made sure that I allowed the previous coat to cure about 15 minutes, not too long. And again, you go as far as you want to with your coating of your plaster. So, you know, um, I'm covering the whole thing just to give you guys an example on, you know, how I would approach it. But, you know, some people might not want to do a smooth coat or you might want to uh, do something a little different or, uh, you know, uh, do another layer of the plaster wrapping and use that as your final coat. Maybe add texture, maybe uh, do a little controlled chaos type technique where you're just wrapping and and uh, allowing the folds to, to do something. So it's really up to you. Well, what's nice about this uh, step here is that even though it's it takes time, you can really make it look like anything and you can smooth it out as much as you want and the smoother it is, the more that you're uh, going to rely on the form of your design versus the surface of your design. So, and also it's nice to be able to uh, have a smooth surface if you so choose, um, so that surface can be treated with another material, paint, markers, Prismacolor, and I'll do a little bit of that just to show you my idea and, and, and after I'm done with this part, this part of the process, uh, what kind of color could I add to this? And it's plaster, so you can add so much to it. Again, acrylic paint, markers, pencil, charcoal, any type of a wood stain or, or um, a wood varnish. Just be safe and make sure you're have good ventilation if you're going to use anything that is kind of um, smelly or has chemical base to it. Um, even, uh, believe it or not, Dr. Bonner's soap. And Dr. Bonner's soap is a very thick, fatty soap, so it, it almost acts like a wax. Okay, so I have my final coat on. Next step, just like the previous, is to wet it down before it gets completely cured. I just finished that coat and I'm just gonna try to get a little bit of softening as much as I can. And it's gonna be a little rough before I give it my first few 
once overs with my sandpaper or my file. So I think everybody should have some sandpaper hanging around. And I'm going to go ahead and let that cure. For about 15, 20 minutes. At this point, it doesn't really matter uh, when you start sanding or rasping or filing because you know you're trying to carve, and if it's soft like this, it's it's a little it carves faster. But remember, uh, you have to tread lightly because you don't want to crack it. So it's always best just to let it cure overnight and um, continue on the next day or whenever you have time to come back to treat the surface a bit more and uh, begin the sanding, begin the finishing, and then again, take it as far as you want, whatever feels good to you on what kind of surface you want. Um, if you want just a good assignment, try to get it as smooth as possible and work with the light source. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and then come back to it and begin sanding. So my form is now cured. I've let it cure overnight, so about 12 hours, 24 hours, uh, around that time, then you can go ahead and, and start. Um, what I have first here, and I'm sure everybody have probably seen what this is, it's just called a, uh, a wood rasp, and it can be used for all kinds of things, particularly for wood is what they use it for. It's really just a good way of, of just kind of taking off rough uh, corners and stuff like that, uh, but it works great for plaster, uh, dry clay, yeah, even, you know, uh, uh, cement. So, um, and they're pretty cheap, they're everywhere. Um, and you're gonna wanna just also have a brush or something because after you're done with it, plaster does really corrode metal. So you just wanna really brush it off or wash it off and let that metal dry. But it's a good way to rough out everything. And you might even like the texture. If you don't have one of these, uh, again, sandpaper would work well. And, and even a uh, carver that is used for ceramics uh, trimming, uh, trimming pots and stuff like that can be used because in sculpture we use that tool as well. And those are these tools right here. And you can see there's a nice curve for them there. Again, these are used for uh, trimming pots, uh, things like that. There's also a small one with a square tip and a round tip. So these work really well. And honestly, these work well uh, pretty much right after you apply the plaster and it starts to get cured. You can also use these. So um, I could have used this pretty early on, uh, but I want to show you how to use the rasp. So if you have these clay tools, uh, they work really well for this process too. Um, a little bit more work to scrape it off or to kind of knife it off with your uh, tool here, but uh, it works really well. You have a lot more control. Uh, I, don't, I don't have these in the beginning of the video because uh, a lot of people don't have these tools. I like to show some demonstrations where you have tools all around the house that you could use instead of going to a particular art supply store to buy something specific. But um, if you do have these clay working tools, definitely use them and you can shape them and uh, do some more accurate kind of a, 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 you know, carving when you are ready. So, but what I'm going to do first here is use the rasp and just try to take down some of the larger uh, areas of texture. Uh, again, your rasp, they, have, they come in all different shapes. They have round, they have a curved rasp. This has a, a, a crescent, so there's a sharp edge, a round edge, and a flat edge. So uh, something good for me to, to use. And again, uh, we're just practicing on how to treat a surface and make decisions on how to um, enhance the surface and smooth the surface down. And then we can think about what kind of color we want to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> And when you're working with the rasp or 
any type of hand tool. Remember to let the tool do a lot of the work. Um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on because I don't want to collapse or break or cause any cracking because everything is working so well right now. So I want to make sure every step I'm being pretty careful and not being too aggressive. Uh, this type of work takes patience. And also, um, make sure you wear your dust mask because it does get dusty. A lot of this work can, can be done when it's still damp. It might be cured, but your plaster can be damp and that should um, uh, soften the dust or the amount of dust that, uh, that, that uh, can accumulate. When you're sanding, you definitely do want to wear your dust mask because even though it's not toxic, uh, you don't want to breathe in any dust if you can help it. I'm going to try to use my tool here let me out with that negative space on the inside And again, all I'm really wanting to do is soften things up. I like texture, so I'm not trying to make this look like a piece of marble. I'm enjoying the way that light breaks off of that, um, that plaster, almost like a, a rough cut marble. So, you know, uh, really always, you know, um, you know, don't try to mimic anything that the material doesn't want uh, to do. So, you know, again, uh, just have fun with the surfacing have fun with the marks that you're making and consider it almost like drawing that every time you make a you know a rasp or, or area of sanding that you are just a, a doing a little bit of a gesturing so acknowledge the uh, the process and you know don't try to hide it too much and you can bounce around like um i, I still need a lot of um rasping to do or rough cut but i can go ahead and switch to my rough sandpaper so definitely uh, you know work intuitively you know 
Um, and you don't have to rasp the whole thing first and then sand down and then carve. I mean, you can definitely do things. So whenever you want, go ahead and start sanding areas because you might like one area really enhanced and really smooth. And that could be interesting when it's contrasting with an area that's very textural. So, um, um, you know, work very organically that way. And again, just always be careful uh, by not collapsing or cracking your form. So it's a light touch, but a touch that you definitely, that it's definitely moving material. And, um, and shaping the surface to your liking.
After I've done some filing, roughed it around, I'm going to now switch to my rough, coarse sandpaper. So I'm going to do my final coat of plaster. I have sanded it down pretty roughly. There's still some areas that uh, I want to fill. So uh, you can do this uh, multiple times until you get the surface that you want. So I think I need about another smooth coat of plaster. I've already mixed my plaster so it's um, getting cured right now. Um, do not forget when you do your second coat or However many coats that you want to do, that you always really douse down your form with water uh, multiple times. Because remember that material is porous, so it will absorb the moisture, so you're going to need to do a few coats of water. So this time I'm going to mix, wait till it gets thick, and use my hand. Because now that I have a lot of the major texture covered and to my liking I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a nice more refiner smooth coat so I can use my fingers now to get into the corners and all the areas that I need uh, to do my final coat and then another round of sanding not too many, much rasping after this another round of sanding and then I should be happy with it uh, again remember you're going to do as many coats as you want and you're going to make your surface look however you want it I might even play around with adding some texture to this coat and not sanding it down and really working with the thickness of that plaster um, to get the surface that I want. So one more coat and then uh, one more final sanding and then I should be done. And as that plaster gets thicker and thicker, you can control it more with your hands. So
So I'm done adding my coat. Next, I'm just gonna wet it down and smooth it with my hand again, but without adding plaster. So I've let it cure for about 20-30 minutes out in the sunlight. It's good that it's a little damp because it lessens the amount of dust uh, that you know will occur when you're sanding. So a little damp is a little softer rather than you know full 24 hours. Then you should wear a dust mask because it's a lot of dust here. But uh, I'm just gonna now, as you can see, how I pretty much have the form. How I want it. All I want to do now is just kind of sand it, give it a quick once over, make sure I kind of uh, get my sandpaper in kind of a circular form. One way you can do it too is kind of uh, curl it over your finger, then you can really get inside those small curves. Um, you could even use a, a little stick of some sort to get it a, a smaller radius. So go ahead and just spend time sanding, put on the music, and have a good time. Just uh, finishing out as much as you want to. I'm not going to go completely smooth. I want a little bit of texture. I like the way it looks. And then I'm almost done. So um, if, uh, I've done two coats of my smooth plaster. And um, you might do a few more um, if you're doing, uh, if you're using spackle, regular wall spackle from the hardware store. It's a lot softer. So you probably just need to really just do one good thick coat and just do a lot of sanding. Um, plaster is a little harder, um, but it's 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 better in my opinion just because uh, it'll last longer and uh, it's it's just consistent with the material that we've been using throughout this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started sanding, and uh, we're almost done. So here is my form, smoothed out and sanded. I haven't sanded it down with the 180 grit yet, but I will do that as soon as it dries a little bit more. But pretty much this is what I like to see, a little bit of texture, some smooth areas, uh, the shadows bouncing and forming through the uh, negative space and, you know, rounding out some of the the uh, planes and the surfaces and you know leaving some of the gesture marks because remember this is a prototype so you go as far as you want with the uh, smoothing and adding of the detail but this gives me a good solid sculpture to ponder over and to enjoy the way the shadows bounce through and it helps me just imagine some larger forms and you know, helps me imagine making a form if I was, you know, this tall right here and how that would look. And I could easily do that utilizing the same technique, just more wire, uh, more 
steps. You can see how you can repeat these steps over and over again and add on top of each other the clay, the wire, the uh, plaster, and then you can just continuously grow taller and taller. So um, I really hope that you enjoyed this process. It's a complex one. It's one that uh, can teach you a lot about freeform negative space, surface, structure, and how amazing uh, clay and plaster uh, uh, the materials are and how much you can do with it and how natural it works with the hand, the shape of our fingers. And uh, of course, it's very forgivable. Uh, you can definitely uh, uh, take stuff off, sand things down, carve things out and, and correct and continuously add. So I hope you really enjoyed this demonstration. Uh, what I'm going to be doing next is thinking about a surface and I won't be doing that in this demonstration because that's just really uh, grabbing a hold of some paint or some sort of oil-based stain, um, even um, markers, but maybe I will be posting a video with the completed uh, surface when I add some color to it. But more importantly, hopefully you've learned how to create freeform sculpture uh, utilizing negative space and process and hopefully uh, your structure is enjoyable to look at and will give you some ideas for future projects of designs, whether it's functional, whether it's sculptural, and whether it's just something you want to do to meditate and keep the hands moving, uh, keep the eye sharp, and just experience the enjoyable uh, processes that sculpture has to offer. So I hope you enjoyed it again, and I look forward to uh, making more demos and making more art to share with you. Thank you very much.